Hi, everyone. This is Helena Hart. Welcome back to my Master Your Magnetism podcast. I'm talking with my very good friend and fellow coach, Mike Goldstein. He's the founder of Easy Dating Coach. And we have a special guest today, Mike's partner, Paige Wilhide. I'm so excited to be talking with both of you. So welcome and thank you for joining me. Hi, so excited to be here. This is a little new for us, having both of us on a podcast. This is fun. Yes, after the last episode that Mike and I recorded together on projection, taking things slow and throwing your list out the window so you can have the relationship you truly want. I'm sure you heard that episode page. Mike told a story about the relationship that he has with you and how you actually wanted to take things slow. And we actually got a lot of requests for a whole episode just on that topic. And I thought, who better to invite on than the person who wanted to take things slow in this relationship? And I'm just so happy to hear how everything has unfolded. So Mike, I know that we are opening up a couple spots for private coaching. We'll talk more about that at the end, but is there anything you want to say before we get started? Well, I just want to say that although it was Paige's idea to take it slow, I also was very excited about taking it slow because I constantly got this whole relationship thing wrong and kept picking the wrong person and relationships kept ending. So it was nice to really just take our time and make sure we had a good fit. Yes, I love that. Just building a really strong, solid foundation rather than jumping in quickly, which I know we've all done that. So there's no judgment here, but relationships don't really tend to work out when you sort of leap before you look. Have you guys found that as well? Yeah, I mean, that's been my pattern in pretty much all of my relationships before Mike. So I had been moving really quickly in past relationships. And for some reason, they were all failing. And I was like, okay, what's happening here? You know, like, what do I need to look at? What do I need to shift in my energy in my approach in order to create the relationship that I'm looking for? And so what it happened to be was having some really, really clear boundaries around my dating and being really honest with myself and going slowly, going at a pace that was a little bit uncomfortable for me. It was out of my comfort zone. It wasn't what I was used to, but in the long run, it paid off because I have such an amazing partner. I love it. I am so looking forward to diving into all of this. I know I hear from so many women who are afraid to take things slow or to express those boundaries because they're afraid it's going to scare a man off or push him away. And the way that you handled the situation was just so masterful, both of you, actually. So I'd love to have you walk me through the beginning of your courtship and what that looked like in terms of setting those boundaries. Or did one of you want to move a little faster than the other one? And I'd love to hear about any sort of conversations you had during that time. Yeah, I'm happy to share. So my journey had been a little pretty unique, I think. I had come out of a year and a half of intentional celibacy. And the intention behind that time was to really go deep with myself and build a relationship and a connection with myself that is unshakable. And so I knew that when I introduced another person, I had to go really gently with myself because I had been alone for the last year and a half. And it would have been kind of jarring to my system to immediately jump into something really quickly. So I actually created a dating plan with some support. We all need support. We all need coaches. We all need community around us who can really support us through that. And that's what I had during this time. And I created a dating plan, which had some really clear boundaries for me. One of them was only one hour dates at a time. And the dates would not involve any alcohol, anything that could cloud my judgment. Another rule for myself was that I would have a week in between dates. If I had a date with the same person, I would wait a week until our next date. So just things like that really boundaried. It allowed me to stay clear. It allowed me to stay low to the ground. It allowed me to stay sober, emotionally sober during those times and to really assess, is this somebody that I can be with in the long term? Like, sure, you can get really high off of the immediate chemistry and all all those good feelings in your body. It feels so good to get their attention and their validation, but that's not sustainable. That can burn out pretty quickly as I have found in my past relationships. And so, yeah, my intention was really to see if we had a strong foundation before committing and before diving all the way in. 
I love everything you said there. And I know so many women can relate or they want to come from that place where they're taking things slow. I know it can be difficult to do that when you have strong feelings for someone or you're not attracted to that many people. And then one guy comes along and all of a sudden you feel chemistry with someone. And so Mike, I'd actually really love to hear from you. What was your perspective on this? Was this something you weren't really used to? And how did this feel for you? I'd love to get a man's perspective on what this is like when a woman wants to take things a little slower. It felt really good, but it also felt scary as well. Like I know early on when I thought she was ready to be kissed, I moved in for a kiss and she was not ready for a kiss. And we didn't have a dialogue right away, but I went home thinking, oh, maybe this woman's not into me. So next date, we kind of talked about it. And I love this. We had open dialogue and she just told me that she wanted to take things slow, but then gave me reassurance. Hey, I'm really into you. Basically a first to me, hey, Mike, you're not wasting your time. I'm really into you. I'm just not ready to kiss. So it was great because it felt so comfortable and so easy to talk to her. And we already kind of built this foundation that we could start talking through things instead of your normal dating where the first time a mistake happens, we don't talk it through. We try to come up with what's happening in our brain and then we make decisions based on not full information. So it was really great. Right. So it sounds like there's a difference between just putting walls up, like just to let you know, I don't kiss on the third date. I believe it was the third date when you went in for a kiss. You told that story in our last episode, right? Yeah. I mean, I went to her and I'm like, hey, I really like you. And I'm just wondering if it's mutual because I was afraid that I was wasting my time where I was starting to feel like I really like this woman. Are we on the same page, basically? Exactly. So yeah, there's a big difference between just putting walls up versus being soft and receptive and open to having a conversation and being vulnerable about it. It's interesting. It really struck me, Paige, when you were speaking about setting up boundaries and it's almost like your masculine energy in gear for yourself. So your feminine energy feels safe to open up and just be open and receptive in those moments. Because Mike, from our conversations, it sounded like you met someone who was really feminine and playful and fun. So it wasn't like like showing up really rigid, like we need to stick to these rules and there was no fun at all in the dates that you were having, the time you were spending together, right? Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point is finding that balance between the masculine boundaries and barriers and then holding yourself in the feminine energy and showing up on the dates as a soft, you know, playful woman. And I remember in that situation when he leaned in and wanted to kiss me, what I noticed is I really wanted to kiss him. <laughs> you know, I really did. And my energy was calling him in in that way like he was feeling my call and so he leaned in of course he responded and I think sometimes women in those situations can get really hard and be like no I'm not available for that I can't believe he did that and just like close our hearts and this is such a practice for me really staying with the desire and with the feminine energy and so I just touched really gently like put my hand on his chest and smiled at him and I was like I need to go a lot slower and that was my communication to him him in that moment and you know afterward we had the conversation because he was a little bit confused like well your energy is calling me in but you're saying something different with your words and he was right it was a little bit of mixed signals because this was a new pose for me you know this is a new practice for me is how do I hold the energy of slowness and how do I stay in integrity with those agreements that I've made to myself and stay slow and stay in that energy and I noticed that I hadn't really been sending him the signal of the slowness, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And I would love to talk about how this translated into becoming exclusive, moving from dating, going into a relationship. If you're open to talking about that, I hear from so many women who maybe aren't quite ready to be exclusive yet, or the man's ready a little earlier, or maybe the other way around. How did that all play out in the relationship between the two of you? Yeah, I mean, once the dialogue got open and it was very clear that we wanted to go slow, I think it just freed us up to have fun. And it wasn't really something we needed to fully think about too much. We were just like, all right, we're going to go on a date a week and we're just going to get to know each other. And we're not going to worry about sex too much. We're just going to enjoy each other. And really, I don't know if we exactly said this, but we built a friendship. We became very good friends. And I knew I care about this person. And I genuinely care about her well-being. 
being. And then at some point, the friendship moved to a point where it's like, all right, what should we do next? Where's this headed? And Mike brought that conversation actually. And it was really beautiful the way he approached it. Because I remember we were taking a walk and he was like, I have a question and you don't have to answer right away. And I love that he prefaced with that. It really created so much safety for me to, again, slow down, right? Him and his masculine being like, hey, I have something I want to bring to the table and you have the container to be able to go slow here. And he asked, he was like, I feel ready to commit to you. And I noticed that you're not there yet. What do you need in order to commit to me? And I'm just breathing, you know, because it was a really high sensation question. And what I was experiencing in that moment was all the fearful parts of me that wanted to say the thing that I thought he wanted to hear, which was, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to be in a relationship. Let's commit. Let's do this. Like the part of me that would jump into something quickly. And mm. so in that moment, and because he gave me that permission, which is so, it's like bringing tears to my eyes thinking about it now. Like it was so special to be able to have that time. And I slowed down and I heard that I just needed a little bit more time. And I wanted to go on a few more dates with other people because I had met Mike pretty quickly after my celibacy. So I shared with him, which was the really scary thing to say because I was so afraid he would run away and he'd be like, well, then fine. If you want to date other people, right? I didn't know how he would react, but that was the thought. And he just so confident in his masculine was like, okay, go ahead. I'm here. I can't promise I'll be here forever, but I'm here right now and let me know when you're ready. It just really set the tone for our relationship and for me feeling safe. That's something I wish for every single woman is to feel so safe in her feminine that she can go slow, that she doesn't have to rush it, that she doesn't have to pull for an answer of like, what are we? It's so incredible to have the partner that gives that permission. Wow, Mike, I would love to hear your experience with that. What was it about your relationship that kept you in that pursuit mode that kept you there even when she wanted to take things? It sounds like a little slower than you were. It sounds like you were ready to be exclusive a little sooner than she was, right? Yeah, I was available to be patient because the connection was so strong. It was so easy to be with her. It was so fun to have conversations with her. It was so fun to go on dates with her, which also gave me some confidence. Like when she said, hey, I want to see other guys, in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> but I was also like, since we built a friendship, it wasn't just about me and what I wanted. I wanted what was best for her too. And since she hadn't really been dating, I wanted her to experience other men so that she could compare and be like, oh, wow, it's so much better with Mike. So I wanted her to do that so she could come to me and be like, all right, I went on a date or two and you're what I want. Because I wanted to be the best. I didn't want to be like the option or like, okay, I wanted to be the guy. She had decided that this is my man. This is the one I wanted. And so I was willing to go through that process for that response. Oh, that is so beautiful. And just to give everyone an idea, how long did the two of you date before actually committing to an exclusive relationship with each other? Uh, it was about two months. Two months. Okay. And Paige, it's not like you had been out there dating for five years. You really hadn't jumped back into dating. And then once you did, you met Mike quickly. And so it sounds like that was your reasoning for wanting to take things slow and not just jump right in, right? Or that was part of your reasoning for it. Yeah, it was part of my reasoning. I mean, another thing is just my pattern of operating out of fear and discomfort and pulling for validation and just latching on to the first guy that likes me. I had really worked on breaking a lot of those patterns. And so I didn't want to slip back into those old habits. And I actually don't know if two months seems long for people or short for people for the courting phase. But for me, that was long. <laughs> I was like, wow, I can't believe I did it. I celebrate that. I love it. You know, to me, two months sounds about right. That's a good amount of time to get to know each other, seeing each other once a week. And then obviously that escalated as the two of you got to know each other more and more. I'm curious, do the two of you have any advice for women who want to take things slow when it comes to getting intimate physically? I know I hear from a lot of women who are afraid to set boundaries around that, or they don't know exactly what to say. They're interested. They want to keep seeing where things are going to go with a guy, but they also don't want to just jump into bed with him right away. 
I would say one thing is to really stay connected to your own life, your own hobbies, your own activities. During this time, I was writing and producing my own one woman show. And so I had a lot going on that was not about him. That's really important. Having a really amazing community around you. I had so much sisterhood, so much support. I had two coaches at the time, maybe three. I'm a big, big, big fan of coaches and receiving coaching. So that's huge. And then I think the other thing is just using I language. So like I need, I want, I would love things like that. Bring it to yourself and soften into your request and into your desire and what you want and just let yourself open to fully receive that. Yeah, Mike, I'd love to hear your perspective too, because we've talked about this before in other episodes we've recorded together that of course the guy is going to want to get closer to you physically. Of course, he's going to want to sleep with you if he's attracted to you. And that's not a bad thing at all. So like Paige said, you don't want to make him wrong for wanting that. But what was the experience like for you taking things slow, even when it came to intimacy and things like that? Well, it was because of how soft she was. And so I really liked her. And then instead of making me wrong for anything that I was doing, it was like, I desire X. And it would be so amazing if we did Y. And so I liked her and I'm like, I want her to feel amazing. So she told me her desires. Let me go deliver them. For me, that was very rewarding. Hearing her get these things and then come to me and say, Mike, this is so amazing. I'm having such a great time. You're such a wonderful man. Like receiving that. I think allowed me to be so patient because I was getting something. I was getting her love and her care in the speed she could deliver it. So it was great. I felt wonderful. And I'm like, all right, you know, we'll have sex when we have sex. It's not a big deal. Now, if I didn't like her as much as I did, it would have been a huge deal. And I'm sure I would have left. But this is great because we want guys to leave that are not really into you. So we get the exact outcome we want. I was literally just about to say that you read my mind. So if a guy drops off when you set a boundary or express your desires around that, then great. He wasn't your person anyway. He wasn't that interested or he was only interested in sleeping with you or having that conquest. I actually did an Instagram story earlier today saying that we were going to be recording an episode on this topic. And we got a question that came through. Paige, you actually spoke to this a few minutes ago, but would you mind if I read this question now? Because I think it's a really good one. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll leave the name off of it, but she wants to know how to energetically take things slow. She says, if you physically go slow, but your energy always gives you away. And I hear from women all the time who are worried about this. They really like a guy and they're kind of fast forwarding in their mind or in their heart. And physically they might be taking things slow, but they're worried that he might be picking up on the fact that they're getting invested or getting attached to him, maybe a little prematurely. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I truly believe that the feminine system needs to go half the speed that our culture moves at right now. We thrive on slowness. And so I think it's really important to do your own practices, like lean into your own practices, whether that's yoga or meditation or going on walks or communicating with nature, anything that can really anchor you into your natural pace of things then your energy will start to like calibrate to that frequency. Then it will permeate in your relationships and you know, your partner will be able to feel that because men are such responders. And I think the other thing is it's okay to mess it up. You know, it's okay to not do it perfectly. Don't beat yourself up. Don't slip into shame. I've slipped into shame a few times after some of our dates and being like, I invited him to yoga tomorrow morning and I'm not supposed to see him for a week. The right person will stay there with you through the messiness, through the hiccups, and it's all part of the journey. I just love getting the masculine and feminine perspective on this question or this topic, especially from a real life couple. So I am enjoying this conversation so much. Mike, I'm curious if you have any tips for someone who wants to take things slow energetically and physically and doesn't want to get invested or attached too quickly when they really like a guy, especially. Yeah, I'm going to give you the most masculine answer ever. (laughs) I literally had two clients this week that went on first or second dates and they come back and they're like, this is my guy. I'm happy for them that they're getting connections because, you know, they're out of divorce and haven't dated in a long time. Like, I'm happy they're excited. But we need metrics. As a dating coach, whenever I'm looking at a client, and this is the mindset I want folks to have, a guy should not even hit your radar until he's taken you on six dates. This is so important because it weeds 
weeds out scammers and weeds out love bombers and weeds out the guys just trying to have sex. Let's see if he can consistently text and call you and get you on six dates over six weeks. That guy is probably starting to be pretty serious about you. And if you come back from date two, date three, date four, and you really like the guy, instead of thinking this must be your guy, just slow down and let's see if he keeps showing up for you. That is fantastic advice. I know we hear from so many women, at least I do, Mike, I'm sure you do as well, who can go on and on about a guy about how wonderful he was, but now he's not putting in as much effort or he's dropped off or pulled away a little bit. Maybe he's still hanging around, but he's not pursuing her consistently. And it's like, hold on, how many times have you seen this guy? And then they've only seen him one or two, maybe three times. So this metric of six dates solves all of that for you, right? A guy doesn't even hit your radar until he's shown you with his consistent action over time that he's interested in pursuing you consistently that can stop you from fantasizing in your head about someone who may not be interested in a real committed relationship if that's what you want right Absolutely. And on top of this, we need to conserve our emotional energy. I keep seeing so many women in between dates, they could be texting a guy all day. They could be hopping on hour, two hour, three hour phone calls with men. And when you do this, when you spend all this time on the phone with him, there's no reason for him to take you out on a date because he already spent three hours on the phone. He's exhausted. And if you do this, he doesn't take you on the dates and he never really falls for you. And you may be falling for for him and you've wasted all this energy on a guy that ends up basically breaking up with you and now you're exhausted and not ready to go on dates with other men that could have been your life partner that's so true because how do we get over invested energetically like this question's talking about it's in our mind right every time we get a good morning text from a guy or have a great phone call we're getting more connected we think that this is really building to something when men don't really feel connected that way it's more about what happens in person do they feel that attraction and connection so that's where we hear from so many women who are like we were texting for eight months we've been talking for two years I mean we've heard all kinds of stories how could he just drop me like that it's like well he could just drop you at the drop of a hat because he wasn't building that in-person connection and attraction and chemistry. Right, Mike? Absolutely. And men that, you know, have been doing this a while know that this formula of texting, phone calls, and then finally getting in person could lead to him having sex. So he's got this formula dialed in that he's executing. And let's take him out of that rhythm so the guys that are just looking for sex are going to realize you're not available for that and leave. And the guys that really want to get to know you, they're just going to show up for their one date a week and be happy about it. Absolutely. I, love, I love how direct Mike is. It's the best. I love getting the masculine. He's like, I got the masculine answer for you. And it's just so direct. It's so good. It's so funny. I was literally just going to say that it's kind of the opposite perspective in terms of masculine and feminine, but you're saying the same thing and it's getting you to the same place. So it mm -hmm. kind of goes back to what you described at the beginning of this episode page, when your own masculine energy is in gear for yourself, like, you know, what you will or will not accept or tolerate in a relationship, you know, what pace you want to go at, what feels comfortable to you. When you have your boundaries and standards so strong and secure within yourself on the inside, that's what allows you to be open and soft and show up on the date and be in your feminine energy because you have that strong trust in yourself. You have that safety net of your own boundaries within yourself. I think a lot of people who just put walls up and they end up pushing guys away, even if they don't mean to, it's because they don't trust themselves to stick to their standards and boundaries on the inside. They don't have that safety net. And so they show up and a guy just smacks right up against their walls. And even if they were interested and attracted to her, that's where the right guy can start to back off or pull away because he just feels like it's never going to go anywhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I know that walls come up out of fear, right? Mm -hmm. Like we want to protect ourselves. We want to protect our hearts. Maybe we've been hurt in the past. And so we see that as a protection mechanism. But I think it's so important to have the plan, the strategy, the holding outside of the date so that you can feel held and safe enough to show up in your feminine on the date and that you don't need to have those walls because you can trust the holding outside of the date. That is so beautiful. I kind of want to just end on that powerful note. I know we're coming to the end of our time here, but I'd love to hear from both of you. Any last words of wisdom on this topic? I think this will give women a lot of reassurance that they can take things slow and the right man will absolutely be patient and want to go at the pace that's comfortable for her. But I'd love to hear from the two of you. Any last words of wisdom on this topic? 
Yeah, I'll just leave on this one thing. When I was putting together my dating plan, my mentor who was walking me through it, I shared with her, I was like, what if by three dates, I haven't kissed him? And what if he doesn't want to be with me anymore? And she was like, Paige, boundaries are hot girl shit. It just makes you hotter when you have boundaries. And I really took that to heart. I just love that perspective. So it kind of negates the fear a little bit when you think about it that way. I love that so much, Mike. I know you've actually talked about how boundaries are really sexy when executed the right way or when expressed the right way. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And of course, any last words of wisdom on this topic too. Yeah, I mean, as you know, I'm like a strategy guy and it just felt like I was dealing with an expert dater. It wasn't like she just was experimenting and trying to figure it out. It was very attractive because I wasn't dealing with a novice. This was expert level dating that made me feel like, ooh, this is exciting. I want to go through this process. And it made me feel special. A lot of other guys, she might have done XYZ process, but here in this moment, we're going to do this slow. And when I find do get access to her heart, it's going to feel so amazing, so unique, and so special just to me. So I was excited for the challenge. I was excited for the journey that I was enjoying. And it was just really meaningful to me. That is so powerful. Thank you both so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I think this is going to be so helpful for so many women out there. And I know you are on vacation traveling the world right now. And so it means a lot that you took some time to be on my podcast today. Paige, I love everything you shared. You really had some powerful insights on how to stay in your feminine. I didn't know we were going to talk so much about feminine energy today, but it just goes right along with everything I talk about and teach. Would you like me to include some information on how people can learn more about what you do? Absolutely. People can find me on Instagram. I do all kinds of things all the time. I do coaching, but I also have a one woman show where I talk about my relationships and what I've learned. It's like the prequel to my journey with Mike. So it's a really special piece of art that I've created. Awesome. I'd love to include information about that and your Instagram and everything. So that'll be in the show notes. And Mike, I know we opened up a couple new spots for private coaching clients. So I can include information on how people can book a free call with you if they're interested in private coaching from one or both of us. Is there anything you'd like to share about that? Yeah, I am so excited about folks that want to work with Helena and I, either one or both of us. It's just been such an amazing journey partnering with Helena. I really can't believe I can say this stat, but when folks have worked with both of us, we've had a 100% success rate at getting clients into relationship, which literally no one else can say they have that success rate. And when folks just want to focus on strategy where maybe they've already done the feminine work, already love themselves, already feel irresistible and good at dating. I've had an 83% success rate without Helena, but we've just been unstoppable when folks hire both of us at the same time. And so we work with people for six months. We've been getting people into partnership in about three to four months and we make it easy. We only make you go on one date a week and you only need to meet six to eight guys to find someone you like. And so if you're ready to rock and roll and get your partner, we have the most successful program in the world and we're ready to roll up our sleeves and get the work done with you and for you. So go in the show notes and sign up for a free call. I can't tell you how many clients have said, oh, I've worked with one, two, three, five coaches, and then they come to us and then they don't have to go to coaching, uh, at least for finding a partner anymore. So let us help you if you'd like it. Yes, we have so much fun working with clients together. And that's six to eight men that they'll have to meet. I always make sure to note that when we're doing audio episodes. Sometimes I get questions like 68 men. That sounds like a lot of guys, but yeah. <laughs> somewhere that range five, six, seven, eight, and we'll be there to hold your hand through every step of the process. So yes, like Mike mentioned, that'll be the first link in the show notes. Just scroll down. If you're listening on Spotify, you might have to click see more. That'll open up the show notes and that'll be the first link in there. If you're interested in working with me, if you're just interested in working with Mike, or if you want to work with both of us, jump on a call with Mike and he'll learn a little bit more about your situation and what would be most helpful for you. Right, Mike? That's absolutely right. We get really specific about who we choose to go on a date with. So you don't need to go on 20, 30, 40 dates, just a few with strategically the right guys that make sense for your specific situation. 
Yes. I know we heard from our last client that we worked with together. Was it last week or the week before she just got engaged? We were so excited to hear that. We were like, wow, another one. So much fun. We just have a blast working with women from my community and Mike's as well. It's just one of our favorite things that we do. So if you're interested in private coaching, make sure to book a call with Mike while we're still offering those for free. And this was fantastic. Thank you both so much for being here. I would love to do more episodes with the two of you. I really like getting the masculine and feminine perspective from a real life couple like I mentioned this was so much fun I had a great Aww. time thanks Helena it was so fun we love being the real life couple yeah thank you for having <laughs> us it's so great to have Paige here with the feminine and Helena with the feminine side thank you so much for having us anytime this was so much fun and for everyone listening make sure you're following my podcast just click the follow button on my podcast homepage. I have new episodes coming out every week so you don't want to miss those and thanks for listening I'll talk with you again next time The biggest mistake women make when a man is hot and cold, acting distant, or pulling away is something called a connection barrier, and it only pushes him further away. If you'd like to read about what a connection barrier is so you don't accidentally make it, go to forever1234.com. Again, that's forever1234.com.